Hi all, still no footy. So to help us get through these difficult times, I am chatting to some rugby league legends to remind us of the good times. And today, I'm happy to say joining us is Roycey Simmons. Royce, welcome. Hello. I hope everyone's good in the lock-up. And how are you coping with lockdown? Uh, well, the wife's hammering me. I, live, <laughs> I happen to live on an acre block and uh, the stuff I haven't done for the last 12 months is getting getting hammered into me. So there's bits and pieces off me everywhere from cutting trees down and doing gardens and so on. But anyway, all good. I feel your pain, Royce. Similar things are happening here, trust me. Now, let's have a look at uh, your stats. You played for just the one club, obviously, the Panthers, between 1980 and 1991. Great career, 238 games, 10 state of origins for New South Wales, 10 test matches for Australia, including the unbeaten Kangaroo Tour of 1986. How good was that? Now, many people believe your last game was that 1991 grand final win over the Raiders. Epic performance. It goes down as one of the most famous fairy tale farewells. You scored two tries in that win. But you actually played a week after that at Anfield, of all places, in the World Club Challenge. How'd that one go? Uh, well, I think MG left his, uh, hit his passport so he couldn't go. <laughs> uh, I wish I had hit mine too. <laughs> Because we went over there, we went over there, uh, and uh, we probably didn't take the right attitude over there. We, you know, like we we just won the uh, the grand final that uh, you know we've been waiting to win for so many years out of Penrith, and uh, we probably had a few too many to drink, and uh, went over there probably not with the attitude that uh, we like. But you you don't want to win, you complain. I mean, Wigan were a very good side in them days, and uh, and they they beat us on that on that day. Now, Royce, you played in uh, one of the toughest eras, the 80s. Uh, coat hangers, concussions, it was all part of the game. You had to be tough just to survive. So I want to ask you to name our top five of the most toughest players you ever played with or against in your career. OK. All right, I'm going to name a couple first that I was lucky enough to go on a wave with a kangaroo tour with that most people would take for granted being some of the toughest, and they, and they certainly are. Uh, was Greg Dowling and Steve Roach. I was lucky enough to, you know, go on the kangaroo tour with them um, and and do the full tour, come back undefeated through that tour. So you've got to have a couple of good, tough starting front rows to go through a kangaroo tour and, and come back with that record. And these two boys, um, uh, it started first test, about a week before the first test. We're going down to have breakfast. We're on the sixth floor. We're going down to breakfast on the first floor. We got in the lift. They, they push, you know, stop. So the lift stopped and they said, are you ready to play this week, Simmons? And I said, yeah, I'm ready, right to play. And they said, well, have you been practised being tough and so on? I said, yeah, I think I'm right. And they said, think. So they hit the lift and it went down again from the sixth floor to the first floor. They belted the living crap out of me. <laughs> Stepped back and walloped me, mate. I had that bruise and belts. And I, knew, I had a flogging before the, the first game. So... Uh, yeah. That's how they prepared you to get ready for... They got me game one and they, they caught me again game two one other one other, other time. But they never got me the third time <laughs> I, I, I run. I got to the lift way before they did. It sounds like perfect preparation before you take on the Poms. Uh, now, so who have we got as number five tough man? Uh, I put down Peter Kelly. Um, Pete, uh, he come to, to Penrith in the in the... The late 80s, Ron Willie brought him down to to help um, toughen the, our forward pack up, and um, oh, well, you know, and get some give some some experience into our forward pack as well. What I liked about Pete, he played somewhere near his best every week. So you know, to, to get the right preparation, toughness is not always about belting people. Toughness is getting a good attitude to turn up each week, be ready ready to play somewhere near your best all the time, and he he. He, he would do that, you know. And, like, he'd come out of a pack that had, uh, from the Canterbury days, you know, it had Peter Tunks, Mark Bugden, Billy Johnson, Paul Dunn, Steve Folks, Paul Langmack, Jeff Robertson, you know. Well, you'd think to yourself, who in the hell do I run out here? <laughs> They're all going to belt you. But certainly Pete wasn't one of them, I'll tell you that. And, uh, you know, he brought, he brought a lot of good character to Penrith and... Uh, and um, we, he sure, even though he wasn't a part of our grand final victory, he, he certainly played some good parts in helping some of the younger forwards come through. Yeah, he certainly helped lay the platform. A man not to be messed with, that's for sure. Who's number four? Number four is Les Davison. 
Um, look, Les again, he come out of a forward pack, I think it was uh, Dave Boyle, Mario Fennec, Tony Rampling, Ian Roberts, Joe Thomas. Uh, so he, he also come out of a, a really tough forward pack. And uh, again, if you're running the ball up, you know, you weren't looking to run into Davo too much because he had a lot of pace with him. Like, as, even though he was big and he's strong, he had speed as well. So, you know, it's a good combination to sit people on their bums and hurt them. And... <laughs> okay, Royce, uh, who is number three? Number three, Steve Folks. Yeah. This bloke's pretty special. Uh, unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. God bless him. Me and him both made our debut um, against New Zealand over at Carlaw Park in the mud. Uh, first test over there. And um, um, throughout that test series, they brought an English referee over and he was hitting the players that hard that the referee kept pulling him aside saying, mate, your tackles are too high. He, he thought he was hitting them around the chin and the neck. He wasn't. He was hitting them around the chest, but the whiplash sort of effect, whiplash effect, was just throwing them in and... Uh, yeah, folks, he certainly was a special player, a wonderful technique in defence in particular. Now, who's number two, Russ? Chris Mortimer. Um, Chris uh, come with Peter Kelly. I spoke earlier about Ron Willey wanting to bring some, some really professional players that have been w at winning clubs like Canterbury. He come along. Uh, on a, the, tough, tough as they come. Uh, center, played centre, ended up coming in the back row later in his career. Um, if, if, look, I'm pretty sure if you went and asked Mal Meninga, Gene Miles, who was a player they had a lot of respect for, um, and they, they are two of the best centers to ever play the game, if you ask them who they had a lot of respect for and who, who put the wind up in a little bit. We had to win his respect, Chris. He, he, was, he wasn't a bloke you become friends with overnight. He wanted to work you out and find out what you're all about before you become his mates. And then when you become his mate, uh, you're his mate. Forever, you know. And okay, Roycey, it's time now for your number one toughest player that you played with or against. It's uh, an old mate of mine called Greg Fernley from Cara. Cara out, out Blaney, Cara away. He actually lives at Carcor. Uh, Greg played for um, for Western Vision again, or played for him lots of times, but played for Western Vision again against the English side that was touring. Really? He put the wind up the palms on, on, a, on a few occasions uh, over at Wade Park at Orange. Yep. Um, yeah, he was a very aggressive man. I'm 17 year old and I'm playing first grade for Cowra Rugby League um, against the men. Uh, first game I have, uh, Greg's my front row partner. At this stage, he's about 32 or three. Uh, the opposition front row put one on me. Knew that I was a 17 year old kid and everything. And I, I sort of did not panic. I didn't know what to do. And Greg said to me, uh, don't do nothing, mate. Just settle in, pack in the next scrum. So we packed him to the scrum and uh, it broke up. I went to run away and Greg said, come back here. And I looked around and he, he decked the bloke and he was laying on top of him with his arms on his chest with his arms pinned out. And he said to me, kick the cat in the head. <laughs> I, said, I said, I can't kick anyone. He said, he said yeah, I know you can't. And, he, and we let the bloke up, but he was just proving a point. <laughs> so no one messed with me, me little mates, you know. Family, yeah, any no other uh, tough men you couldn't quite fit in the list? But these two blokes, Matt Goodwin. Yeah. Look, honest to God, every time you give Matt Goodwin the ball, he ran the ball as hard as he, good, as he could. If you give him the ball 20 times in a game, he'd run it 20 times as hard as he could. If he had to make 30 tackles in a game, he'd make 30 of the hardest tackles ever in the game. And the other one, um, Brad War, uh, played with him in the early 80s with Penrith. All the things Matty had, only he wasn't quite as quick. Brad, Brad was about as quick as me. <laughs> well, not even as quick as me, to be honest. Being nice to him there. But as tough as they come. And uh, again, as I said, all these blokes, the one thing they've got, they've got themselves ready to play each week. You know, it's not all about, you know, high tackles, king hitting people or, or, or doing whatever. It's about turning up and playing somewhere near your best each week. That's where I get your, your best place from. Roy uh, thanks so much uh, for giving up some time and chatting to us. Uh, you're an absolute legend for the Panthers and the Blues and Kangaroos, of course, and uh, we really appreciate your insights today. Thanks, Adam. All right, there he is, uh, Roycey Simmons on our latest instalment of Hibernation Heroes. Thanks so much for watching at home. Stay at home, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.